Hey everyone, I'm Charting Man Dan with The Chart Guys. I've been trading for the last 13 years. In this video, we're going to check in on the markets. This morning was the most unusual morning of trading that I've seen in all of 2023. I'll show you why, what it means, where money is going, and what we're looking at from here. So when you trade the market every day, you start to get very accustomed to certain things, certain ways that the morning shapes up. And today was extremely unusual where right before the bell rang, some of our major tech names dropped then the bell rang and huge volume dumped these names down. And it was the Magnificent Seven. It was Apple. So you could look at, you know, pre-market right into the open. Look at that candle. I mean, this is a huge candle at 925. And that candle dropped the price one and a half percent in five minutes. And then the bell rings and we grind down. And you could just go through the whole list. Apple, all the most important names in the market. Apple, Amazon, Microsoft. Google, Meta, look at that Meta drop, NVDA, Tesla, all dumping all morning. What was QQQ doing while that dump took place? What the? It's going up? That makes absolutely no sense. I have not seen that in any real meaningful way at any point this year. There have been some little times recently where it's happened. So... What is going on? Rotation. I know you've been following along. I know you've heard me talk about rotation 150 times. I know that you realize that rotation is why this market has been so healthy over the last five weeks. Big tech and NASDAQ, no, big tech and semiconductors led the way up. Then they chilled out a little bit. Laggards took over. Now we're seeing Again, if you're on social media, everybody keeps complaining. This market's only up because of these seven names going up all year, holding the markets up. This is the exact opposite of that. This is that being corrected. You know, was this actual rotation with rebalancing going on in the NASDAQ? Maybe we got that, you know, rebalancing back in July, which was the third time in history it's ever happened because the weight was so significant in these names. But what you had was the big seven dropping and everything else going up. Money was leaving those big names, but it was not leaving the market. It was going into the other names to propel the NASDAQ and the S&P 500 higher. If you are a bull, you know, I'm sitting there looking at all this bloodshed in the, these major names. And if you're a bull, this is exactly what you want to be seeing. You're seeing a healthy dispersion of capital being allocated elsewhere out of these massive names. And so again, you know, yes, there are bearish trade opportunities on individual names, but the last five weeks, it's, it's not a good idea to be shorting these ETFs because of, can you imagine how frustrated a bear is today that is short the NASDAQ and sees that on the morning and they're in a red position in their NASDAQ short because of this rotation? So the takeaway for me was rota rotation. The bulls are in complete control. The NASDAQ and the S&P 500 have a date with all-time highs. And unless something massively changes to derail that, we're headed to all-time highs for these monthly cup and handles to confirm. We do have a lot of data this week. We got CPI tomorrow. The 30-year bond auction was very volatile the last time it happened. That's tomorrow. And then the FOMC is Wednesday. That's the bear's last hope. The bear's last hope is seeing those data points drive the price down and seeing all major sectors dropping together because if that does not happen, we're going to all-time highs. So, all right, NASDAQ. Weekly bull flag confirmed. Remember, hindsight lessons. We talked about it back then. Remember when Microsoft confirmed the monthly bull flag and we said that increases the probability that all these names are gonna do it as well. They did. Then Apple confirmed the weekly bull flag. That increases the probability that all these names are going to do it as well. Now they have NASDAQ, SMH, confirming the weekly bull flags behind Apple. Apple gives us a probability shift. Apple confirms the weekly bull flag. Probabilities increase that everybody else is going to do it. And so now we've done it. And NASDAQ, QQQ here, all-time high adjusted for the dividend is 3, make that 403.44, which means we are 2.5% away from all-time highs. We also now have space where we can pull back and form a daily higher low. The NASDAQ can drop 2% and form a daily, a healthy daily higher low. So if the major names being down 2 to 
Again, all of them were down 1.8 to 2.8%. I mean, I think Meta was down over three to four. They were down huge. And the NASDAQ didn't care at all. Extremely bullish and strong. SPY has not lost the daily higher low pattern since the lows. We have a weekly stair step pattern of a higher low every single week for seven weeks in a row. All time high for SPY adjusted for the dividend is 1.2% away. Maybe a little more, 1.3. And for SPY, anything above 454s will be a daily higher low on consolidation. So again, it's just a Hail Mary hope that there's a bearish news reaction this week because otherwise the bulls are just going to keep this momentum. Again, this is an unusual, it's, it's less unusual than it was a few weeks ago. This is an unusual move off the low. This is a capitulation kind of bottom, not coming from capitulation setup in terms of extreme fear. And we just got to listen to the price action and stick with the trends. SMH weekly bull flag confirmed all time highs hit today. Again, you want more rotation? I got it for you. NVDA, big red today. How is SMH going up? There's rotation going on. AMD, lead semiconductor bull. MU, taking the lead. Look at MU divided by NVDA. This is showing us the most significant relative strength in MU compared to NVDA in six months. It's the strongest it's been compared to it in six months. AMD divided by NVDA, the strongest it's been in more than that. Six plus months. This is rotation. This is intra-sector rotation. Sometimes we see inter-sector rotation. NASDAQ drops, financial sector goes up. This is within the sector. Big name NVDA, chill out. Money going to the other names to act as laggards. Same thing as what happened in the NASDAQ. So Big money leaves NVDA, goes to other semiconductor peers. Big money leaves the other big names, goes to every, everything else in the NASDAQ. One thing to note, Netflix inverse to Amazon. I have not noticed this in a while, but inverse to Amazon and Apple today. Shot up on the 15-minute time frame all morning, gave it all back all afternoon. Amazon dumped all morning, bounced all afternoon. So going to keep an eye on whether that inverse relationship remains a thing or not. But very clearly, Netflix benefited from the rotation that was taking place today. And Netflix weight in the NASDAQ is much less than it used to be. I don't know what it is now. Maybe it's like number 11 or number 9 or something like that. But it benefited from that rotation today. And ARM. ARM is in the same boat with NVDA. Again, uh, this is a semiconductor name, but it dropped with NVDA. It was just a daily inside bar. We rejected from the high of Friday first thing, but it is, you know, I got to keep an eye on this now because I've got a swing position in ARM and got to make sure bulls stay in control. And so again, the mindset is, you know, you look at all these names, Apple on the daily, what's the most likely scenario? A daily high or low. Amazon holding daily support. Google Tightening daily equilibrium, looking for a higher low. Meta, trying for a daily higher low. My point is, if these names set daily higher lows, that's the fuel for all-time highs and follow-through. I mean, what if, what if Meta and, and Amazon and these names act as laggards to confirm their weekly bull flags after the NASDAQ has already done it? The only way I'm changing my tune is you give me a big red day with all major sectors dropping at the lows together and I'll say, okay, we haven't seen this in a while. It's getting our attention. And now we'll see if we get follow through. In the absence of that, just got to stick with the trends. Healthcare. So last week I was in a couple bearish positions where I shorted XLV. I took a third of profit into the initial pullback, break even stop or very low risk stop right over the high, stopped out of XLV today. We just keep setting daily higher lows. Higher low, higher low, higher low. New high here, XLV getting to the highest price today at 133.19. That's the highest price that we've seen in over, or just about, yeah, over three months. <clears throat> XLF, 
Same deal. I had a bearish position. I took partial profit. I stuck a break-even stop at the high. I stopped out. It's a daily bull flag. We are now testing the highest level that the financial sector has seen, 36.59. If we get over that level, that's the highest level in over a year and a half. What's the most likely scenario when this consolidates? It's a weekly higher low. SPY, weekly higher low will be on watch. IWM didn't do much today. Inside bar, growth names didn't do much today. ARKK did sell off a bit. So we weren't rotating into growth names, but still maintaining the daily uptrend for now. Again, I know I keep saying it, but bears are not sneaky. Don't enter bearish into bull momentum like this. Enter bearish when the bears raise their hand and say, here I am, here's the huge volume, here's all the sectors dropping together. It's not gonna, you know, you're not, the bear dump if there's going to be one, it's not going to be in one day. You'll see a glaring shift in what has been happening for the last five weeks, if anything is going to change. Crypto stocks dropped because Bitcoin is on the verge of weekly consolidation after two months of straight up. So a lot of volatility in these crypto stocks. I did a little day trading today. I traded the MARA bounce, a little ARM bounce, just some little small wins, locked those in. But mostly after this morning, I was, this is very unusual. I'm trading a lot less today uh, because when something is that unusual, I, I, I was almost speechless while, while live streaming this morning and that doesn't happen. I've live streamed many thousands of times. The dollar testing the highs, still struggling at those highs, but it's only gonna be a convincing rejection of resistance if we were to break 103.98 support. The metals are still extremely weak. Gold is in a daily downtrend. We are looking for a weekly high or low, but then we're going to look for a weekly low or high. I think the dollar is going to be very key here because the dollar is either going to confirm a weekly downtrend or set a monthly high or low. Those are two very different things. So one of those two things is going to happen, and that's going to have a significant impact on what the metals do. But uh, top is in for a while for gold, in my opinion. Again, that blow off top last week and still not recovering in, in the sense of still not finding a bottom. Silver, look at this waterfall drop. So I have given full transparency. I made a bunch in, in metals and miners in my IRA leading up into this move. I was positioned heavily and I'm giving a lot of that profit back. I took some profits. You know, I set my break even risk free stops, but. You know, I'm, I'm holding some position through this monster pullback because my mindset was, you know, if, if I had stuck to my normal trading mindset, which is shorter term, it's take profit into euphoria. My mindset was looking for an all time high and looking months down the road. And maybe it plays out over the next few months where bulls can recover from this, but there's no sign of it. And again, just full transparency, you know, from, from IRA being at all time highs, uh, euphoria, to definitely giving back a good bit, but uh, still holding on fine. Just to pull back, consolidation of the IRA, uptrend in the value, that's the way it goes. So I am looking for a miner's bounce. The miners showed a little bit of a sign of a bounce today. You can see GDX and GDXJ with a bit of a bullish candle trying to get a bounce going. So they're trying to lead and so I'm watching closely tomorrow. Do we get a daily bounce in the miners? Does silver find a bottom to break the daily stair step to try and get a bounce going? So going to pay attention tomorrow with a short-term mindset on the metals and the miners, but still all bear control at the moment. Oil, weak bounce, nothing going on yet. If daily EMA 12 is resistance, it's a potential daily bear flag and nothing changes. So still one of the weakest sectors, energy, daily weekly downtrends still. Not many sectors are in daily weekly downtrends. I was watching XLU to potentially be a daily rising wedge, but we'll see how that goes. There's just names in, I mean, CMG, just blue sky. Look at this blue sky euphoria from that falling wedge. Just straight up, GoDaddy, blue sky euphoria, straight up. This market... I know fundamentals, I know recession, I know, but there is just nothing bearish about this market whatsoever. It can change quickly. 
In one day, that statement can change. But we will see that big glaring day. Natural gas free fall into a capitulation attempt at a bottom. Again, natural gas has been all bears for weeks and weeks at this point. It is a very high volume capitulation kind of flush. We have to confirm the hourly uptrend. We have to confirm the four hour uptrend, but at least it's a temporary bottom. Just absolute bloodshed in natural gas recently. All right. Don't fight the market. Think about it. Think of all the people that are talking about big bear moves. You don't have to nail the top for it to be a worthwhile big bear move. Otherwise, it's just going to be a healthy weekly high or low. And it will be better to look for the weekly high or low long entry than it will be to short into the weekly consolidation. Check out this Twitter post. And I don't, I haven't been really been following this individual. He's certainly well known. It's a word to, of caution in many, and, and shout out for being transparent. So Sang Luchi, I don't, I'm sorry if I'm mispronouncing his name, blew up a seven figure account. Transparent, got to give props to that. This individual has been making educational trading videos as long as I've been trading, 13 years. It only takes one mistake to blow up your account unless you're positioned to protect against that. One of the reasons that I won't put any significant amount of size in a futures account or things like that is because I want there to be zero chance that I can go on tilt. But uh, this is just shorting against, though this is developing a bias and, and sticking with it. He had a, an ominous post of, you know, a week ago, a week plus ago, the dumbest, most stubborn degenerate is the short hunter. We can't stop until we hit the monster trade and prove everyone wrong or take the account to zero. So at that point in time, he clearly knew that he was all in on this trade and it failed. And it was, again, just playing counter to what was a very unusual move up, short squeeze, whatever you want to call it. So protect your capital Believe the market when it is telling you something. This, it looks like this was an attempt to outsmart the market in terms of not believing the move up and the significant volume and the rotation and the back burners. So I'm sure it'll be all right. But again, that just shows you, you can be decade plus into the game and blow up a giant account. Do good things. If anybody has any experience, I don't have any content here, so any experience with saunas, wood fire sauna, whether you had a custom built one, whether you bought a, um, a kit and assembled it, I'm gonna do the, the sauna cold plunge thing and just starting to do my research. And one of the justifications for me is, well, if the world ends, I'm not gonna be able to heat this house and I could live in the sauna and insulate it and have my little wood stove and survive the winter. So I can justify spending $10,000 on a song. We'll see, let me know. Hey everyone, I'm Chan. <laughs>